Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today, we're gonna to be automatically constructing and sending a proposal. So if you're in the agency world and you send proposals often, you know how sometimes they can be custom and it can take a whole lot of work to try to get a page together of just what you're trying to do. So proposal creation is a great automation that can save you tons of time and reduce more errors than you can count. So for this automation, we need Google Drive, we need Airtable, and we need Google Slides. So get your tools ready and let's hop in. Looking at the Google Slide pre-proposal template, I wanna point out a couple things. Yes, we're making a document and we're making that document on Google Slides because Google Docs doesn't allow the automatic uploading of images. So instead of using Google Docs, we're gonna be using Google Slides so we can insert images and we can really have a little bit more design fidelity inside of our automation and inside of the pre-proposal that we'll end up producing. So looking at the image itself, um, notice that the layout is in page format, right? So to get that, we do need to go to uh, file page setup and that's how you can end up setting up an eight and a half by 11 page size, right? Because a lot of presentations are gonna be made for a presentation, not so much a, uh, a proposal. So setting this up as a eight and a half by 11 page uh, and using this curly bracket notation allows uh, Zapier to know that this is a slot that you can insert a variable into. So for this case, we have a client logo, we have the client name, we have a send date, we have workflow name and description. So if you'd like to learn more, right, this is just text that's, that's inside of the document and you can see there's uh, an image in the background um, and you know, a couple different images that we actually need to upload. So this is what our Google Slides template looks like and we'll link that in the description down below. For our Airtable, we have two views. We have a grid view uh, with a handful of different fields, right? The proposal name, the client, send date, uh, which also includes a time, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, the client logo, client email, workflows, workflow name and the description. So in Airtable here, I just wanna go through all these fields because we did something called a linked database inside of Airtable, specifically with the attribute of workflows. So the way Airtable works is that first column can be used to link to another table inside of this base. So in our case, we have a, uh, a table called workflows and then we have a uh, description of that workflow. And when we go into our pre-proposal, we are going to select which workflow specifically we're, we're using or we're referencing. And this is a, a link to another record, right? So we're linking it to the workflows database uh, or the workflows table inside of Airtable here. And then we have these two lookup fields, it's called, uh, the, these, these fields are called lookup fields, where we're looking at the name of the workflow and then the description of the workflow. So if just for example here, if I delete this, right, it deletes the workflow name and workflow description. But if I say, oh, digital event transcription, and I go here, right, I have digital event transcription, that description gets appended to this record right here so that you're able to see all of the material, uh, in this case, all of the description copy associated with digital event transcription, or we could do client onboarding. Uh, if we wanted to get really fancy, we could even say tutorial making. It's fun, you should try, right? And I could put that right in there and come back over here and we can say, oh, here it is, tutorial making. And there's our workflow name and description. So linked tables uh, are a really great way of bringing to information together from a lot of different sources in a way that you can keep them organized. And in this case, we're organizing uh, workflows and we can have a description of workflows that can be a whole table about workflows. And then we can very easily bring them in and reference them inside of these pre-proposal uh, templated uh, records. So we're going to be actually engaging with this automation through this form. Uh, and this form has all of the fields that are in the grid view. 
and we'll be using this form to trigger our automation when we're ready to actually use it. So enough with the, the side tools, right? Airtable and Google Slides, let's get into the automation itself. So this automation is gonna be triggered based off of a new record in a view. And in our case, that is gonna be the pre-proposal grid view. Uh, so we'll, we'll use that view to trigger this entire automation. And in this case, right, our client is gonna be Google and we have a whole bunch of other uh, data and information that we can see is in the first row of this grid view. So our Zapier test, uh, our test data, um, we could load more and it'll spit out two or three more, right? That is gonna be very similar because it's all the same data inside of our Airtable. It's really important that when you start to build this automation, you have data inside of Airtable that you want to construct with. You're not gonna be able to build a proposal or build the automation to build the proposal unless you have the test data, in this case in Airtable, available to be able to insert those variables in the places that you want it to go. So let's move on to the second step. Second step is going to be uh, a date and time formatter. So we're going to take the, the, the send date that we described inside of Airtable and we're just going to reduce it to uh, a date itself. It's not going to include a time. So in this case, that's August 11th. Uh, and we'll retest this just to show you, right? It's August 11th, 2021. And here we are with August 11th and there's, you know, three o'clock and 312. Um, but since we want to insert the date into the proposal, we don't actually want the time, right? In, inside of the proposal too. So that's what we're using here for the send date. The send date is just August 11th. The client name is Google. And again, right, we're picking these variables from uh, the selector that comes down when you when you click on those fields and just clicking off of it to, to minimize that menu. And the client logo here, you want that full URL. You do not want the hydrate, uh, the, the actual file in this case. Again, it's it's really different on a per automation basis. But in this case, we don't want the, the client logo hydrate file. We want the client logo thumbnail full URL. Uh, and when we send that into the automation, it's going to grab it and insert it into our Google slide template uh, as, as we intend, right? Uh, the flow name is gonna be client onboarding, description uh, as, as the description is, and we can go and retest this. And hopefully we get a nice green bar. There it is, right there. So we got that, that, uh, that success message right across the top. And just like all of the other Google Drive, uh, Doc, Slides, um, you know, sort of G Suite applications, on the way, 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 way bottom, we get a alternate URL, alternate link right here. So we're gonna copy this and paste it right in. And there it is. We have our logo. We have the client proposals uh, for Google, we have the date, we have client onboarding, and we have that description. Uh, so all of that is, is visible as expected. And again, just for, uh, you know, to, to show sort of the, the difference here, just put them right next to each other, right? We have the output of the test automation on the right, and we have the template on the left, just so you can see how all those different fields kind of line up. Awesome. So our fourth step here is going to be on Google Drive. And the, the really major port part that you need to remember is that this is uploading a file and the file that we want to upload is going to be the export link application slash PDF uh, variable from step three. So if you go into step three and you show all uh, the, the different variables that you get from your Google slide, uh, one of those is an export URL. It's right next to the alternate link. They like to put them next to each other, right? So you have your export link here and you're gonna put it as that file variable. And when it is a URL, Google is gonna download that uh, file inside of Google Drive. So for good measure, put your .pdf extension and when you test that, you'll get 
a good old green thumbs up here and we can retest just to make sure things are working as intended and they are so we can grab this alternate link right here we copy this open up a new tab paste that in and voila there is our uh, templated proposal for google on august 11th so um this google drive step is critical if you want to attach a pdf to an email to send it uh, normally you wouldn't want to send just a Google slide presentation, right? That's that's probably not what your prospective client is looking for. So um, the, these last two steps here, five and six, uh, are, are pretty important. So step number five is going to delay until that full send time. So you saw earlier, it was like three o'clock, 312, whatever that date and time is, that's what we're gonna use the time for. Uh, we're going to use the time to delay until that specific time in order to send this email. So in step six, we're selecting Gmail, a simple uh, send email step. And when we set that up, you can uh, grab the client name from or the client email address from step one. Uh, in this case, we're sending it through our robots email and the from name is going to be X-ray tech projects. You know, you can customize any dimension of this. You can even put, you know, emojis here if you wanted to inside the subject line. Uh, we always like to put emojis in the subject line. So uh, you can say, hi, this is your template or this is your uh, new proposal. Uh, let me know what you think, whatever you want to put inside of that email. And then for the attachment, you're going to insert the file exists but not shown from step four and that is going to be the actual pdf that is going to be attached to the email that is sent and just like that you are all done um in in six simple steps you can create and send a pretty much entirely custom proposal uh, in a templated way to a prospective uh, client. This can save you an enormous amount of time. I hope it is helpful. If there are any other sort of questions or things you'd like to see us automate, definitely throw a comment down below. As always, links and resources are in the description down below. And don't forget, keep the flow.